Hey folks, welcome back to the lab. I've been uh, very, very busy these uh, last couple of weeks trying to get uh, some electronics in. It's been a little bit difficult. We've got uh, some properties that need to be maintained and uh, you know, it being well, late spring at this point in time, I've been told that I need to get them done. So that's what I've been working at really hard. I mean, one of the things I want to get on with is, th is that power supply that I've been working on. But in order to do that, I have to get uh, through the mail that it's come in and believe it or not the pile is even bigger than before but there are a couple of essential pieces in that mail that allow me to move forward with the power supply but, you know, this thing here this has actually got nothing to do with electronics it's something i got from my niece's son he's uh, gotten into drawing he doodles none of it makes very much sense but um yeah, it's a it's a drawing tablet, and he could use this for his doodles, or at least I I think he can. So basically, it's it's a liquid crystal panel. I'm trying not to get too much light shining on it here, uh, but you can draw on it and erase it, and draw on it again. I'm just wondering if it would be handy in the lab to get myself one of these, you know, for drawing circuits. I don't know, would it? Uh, I don't like the grading in the colors there. It's kind of yellowish up here and greenish down here. And it changes all over the place like that. So it's kind of funky that way. And uh, uh, one good thing about it is I think it can be protected. So if you, if you click that there like that, then you can't erase it. But you can still draw on it. So it's not as though your drawing is completely protected. But uh, uh, he should have some fun with this. But anyway. I just wanted to show that to you. I thought it might have some application. This came here. Sorry, I, I opened it up already. This is the case for the power supply. But anytime these things come to me, yeah, packed so poorly, I, I open up immediately to see if they weren't damaged. And, and uh, in this case, we didn't get any damage. So that was, uh, that was lucky. And that's going to be the case for the power supply. This came in from DigiKey here. I believe this is the new transformer. Trying not to show any labels or stuff like that. Apparently I'm not good at blocking them out. Not that I really mind if somebody knows where I live. It's just other people get upset at it. And I don't know, there might be some rules about it that I'm not aware of. And anyway. I love uh, DigiKey's packing. It's, I know I keep saying that, but it's, it's, uh, it's worth repeating. Throw me in any extras in there? Nah. Okay. Like a big transformer packed in an anti static bag. The box put in an anti static bag. That's gonna cost them a lot of money, eh? But uh, yeah, so here it is. It should be a. Yeah, so it's an F FD820, which is a uh, 4 amp. 20 volt transformer. So how does that compare with the 24 volt? They're exactly the same size. Just I just imagine this winding here is a little bit smaller. I had doing some uh, interesting experiments with the uh, power supply, but I'll get into those um, when I do a video on the power supply, hopefully uh, in the next couple of days. And uh, made some decisions about where I want to go with it. And, I think the only route to take with that power supply is to just reduce the specifications of it. So I think I'm going to end up with a power supply that is uh, 0 to 25 or 0 to 24 volt, 0 to 2.5 amps, so that we don't have to make too many other changes to the, the hardware in order to get it to work reliably. And that's a concern of mine is that I want a bench power supply to be reliable. This, uh, this came in from Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, so this is just those little meters. Like the one I showed you in my last uh, video of the power supply. They're exactly the same. I was hoping, I ordered these ones from the very same ad that I ordered the ones that I made um, my ball water laminator out of. 
And the reason I did that is because uh, they had volts and amps, but then the amps would switch back and forth between amps and power. And although they're the very same ad, and I paid exactly the same price for them, they this is these are the ones that are pictured in the ad. So I don't I got those other ones I guess because they were out of these or something, and I, I just got lucky that time. But I can't seem to find those other ones. This is all I seem to be able to find, um, except for something else, which I'm going to show you. Some of this stuff, you know, is probably not going to be very really interesting, but I don't know how to separate all this stuff out without opening up first. Okay, so these here, these are little breakout boards for the small outline IC, 8-pin small outline IC. That'll give me more options than using operational amplifiers in the future. I've got a, a couple of uh, sources for these. And this, these are, wow, this is a lot packed into one little uh, bag there. But these are just round pin headers. And some of them which are bent. These don't like to be bent, so I'll probably, uh, some of these will be lost. I'll try to straighten them out, but. These are round pin headers, and, and they're especially, especially good for use in, in cases like this, because they're a much smaller diameter pin than the regular square pin headers and they fit into machine sockets a little bit better. Uh, so they're, they're, they're good for this purpose, for turning these things into dips. Yeah, a set of different Zener diodes. There's supposed to be like 20 different values in here. Yeah, 3 volt, 3.3 volt, 3.9 volts, all the way up to 36 volts, 15 volts. And I'm thinking of putting uh, maybe a 3.3 or 3.9 volt into that power supply just to reduce the uh, negative voltage swing a little bit. It should still be plenty enough to provide uh, proper operation. But uh, let's see, we'll go with 3.3 volts. But it will uh, reduce the voltage across the um, operational amplifiers by another volt and a half or so. 3.3 volts. Yeah, you know, I'd probably have to select this uh, manually. 3.4 volts. So they're all going to be a little bit different. Let's try the one at the end here. Oh, got it around forward again. Zeners only work backwards. 3.3. Okay. So I'll probably put something like that in there. Uh, to reduce that negative voltage rail and provide a little bit more headroom on the power going to the operational amplifiers. Another bag with a bunch of stuff in it. Okay, these are just banana plugs with protector sleeves on them. Might be difficult to show you this the way it is right now. But, uh, these cells have to be assembled. But they have these little uh, retracting sleeves on them, protector sleeves. It'll be handy for making up test cables and stuff. And here is the meter that I'm thinking of using in the power supply. Now this one is a, an LCD meter. I wonder if I can get it up and show it to you here. Let me see if I can put some power on it. Okay, so there's the display. It's got uh, voltage, current, and power. And uh, it's got calibration for both the amperage and the voltage, so we can get it set up nicely. So I think that this is the meter I'm going to be using. DIY more. Yeah, that's good for up to 500 volts at 10 amps. And it's DC. And there it is. There's your, your current shunt. Microcontroller there to do all the hard lifting. Probably doing everything. Ah yes, just some more of those. The black the black versions of these. Completely packaged differently. But that's okay. Doesn't matter. 1,000 volt, 25 amp. Hmm. 
Ah, yes. Test leads. I saw these test leads and uh, the description. You know, the description can be very uh, deceiving on AliExpress and other places like that. But the description of them was very nice. Oh, and they do feel nice. Oh, yeah, they do. They do feel very nice. Very, very, very nice. Feel good in the hand. This part here is a little bit plasticky. But this part feels very, very nice, as does the, the cable itself. It's very supple. Very, very supple. And they're supposed to be very, very sharp, too. And they are. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Like these ones here. These ones are Pomona. And, uh, you know, they're, they're nice. I mean, they, this, this cable feels just as nice as this cable. Um, but the the probes themselves, these ones are much nicer. Now these these Promona ones were uh, they were something like twenty nine dollars for the set. But uh, yeah, now the Pomona do have the uh, the connectors like this on with the sleeves. But I've got these here to add on to these. So yeah. Okay, onwards and upwards. Ah, ten turn pot. I believe it's ten turn. It actually seems to be ten turns. I got I got two different kinds just to check them out. I was going to put one of them or both of them into the power supply, but I've decided to do the the pots on the power supply a different way with a coarse and fine. I think this is the other pot, the other ten turn pot. Yes, it is. So this is the other type that I got. Not quite as smooth as that other one. I've used these before and they're not too bad. Like I said, they're not quite as smooth as the other one. Ah, here. This is a capacitor. This is also for the power supply. I do not believe that that little 3300 UF capacitor is sufficient. So I got this as a 10,000 microfarad capacitor, but we're, we're going to test that in the next video. We'll, uh, we'll put it up at its maximum, which will either be 24 or 25 volts, depending on what I think I can get out of it. And then we'll draw two and a half amps at it and see how much uh, ripple we get and whether or not I need to put this into it. Is it Changzing? Definitely not Rubicon, but uh, I, I don't want <laughs> a Rubicon capacitor of this size temperature would cost more than the power supply. So I'm not interested in doing that at this point. If I design my own power supply, which I'm really feeling like I want to do, I, I may go with a Nippon Chemicon or Rubicon or something like that as the filter capacitor. All right, what's here? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, so uh, this is an IC pin straightener. I had one of these uh, uh, a long time ago. I don't know where it went. It got lost in the shuffle, life shuffle. But I've been looking around for them. The Element 14 had them for a reasonable price, but then you got to pay, you know, three times the price of the thing itself to get it shipped. And I looked on, um, I think uh, DigiKey have them, and but they're incredibly expensive. And so I found this on Amazon UK. And the price to get it shipped here, I think it was five or six dollars or something like that. But anyway, it was my cheapest option was to buy it from the UK. Ah, yeah, I've gotten these before. These are, again, they're banana plugs, straight through banana plugs. These ones are very nice, they're gold plated and anytime you solder uh, stranded wire like that, if it's going to be used in, in like for test leads and stuff like that, it's just too much uh, movement and vibration and tugging on it and eventually that solder joint's going to break and uh, the wire will just come right out. Uh, so it's, it's far better here to have them screw clamped and uh, these are, they're actually pretty good. And these are just headers, like the, probably though they'll be less bent than the other ones. I hope. These are the the female headers. So 
I get these mostly to make uh, arbitrary sockets. I usually have a supply of these around to make IC sockets. There's something in there, don't know what it is, not much. Ah, okay. But these, these are the other ones with those breakout boards. So SOIC 8 to DIP 8. There you go. It's just a, practically the same thing. So whichever one is better is the one I'll buy more of in the future. Okay. I think we're finally coming to an end here. I think we've got three more packages. Yeah, so here's, here are the brackets for that capacitor. Okay, yeah, that's just to hold that capacitor down. Should we need a new blade on that. Yeah, big diodes, six amp, six amp rectifiers. Now these are these are handy. It's just a way to get power into things. So they're just a little uh, USB socket that fits into a little rectangular hole. And uh, I got them mostly for power, but uh, you can bring the data in on them as well. They're just a regular USB A type socket. The last one. I'm gonna hide my name and address there. So these are the potentiometers I'm going to be using for the fine controls on the power supply. Everything comes with bent pins. So they're just a double gang pot. Now I've got the I got 10k ones and 1k ones. The 1k ones are the ones I'm actually going to be using on the power supply. Yeah, I'll show you how that works when we when we get to doing that part of the power supply. I think I did already. I showed you the, the circuit for that. So I think this is all the stuff I got for the power supply in this uh, shipment. Yeah, okay. So uh, the next video will be uh, regarding this power supply. And uh, I'll show you some of the, the, the things that I've been working on with it in the background. Hopefully we get the thing working reasonably and then we'll come back to a final thing where we assemble it all up and test it out through its operating range. All right. Thank you very much for coming out to join me today, folks. Uh, sorry about the you know, lack of videos for this past week or so. Hopefully we'll get back on track again uh, as I get my other responsibilities looked after. We'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.